different types of examples for your steel structures. The first one is Nest Stadium of Beijing in China, which was constructed during the Olympics of 2009. It's the best example for your steel structures, which is in the shape of bird's nest. It's completely constructed by using your steel structures. Second one, Central Bus Terminal in Hyderabad, which is located opposite to your MGBS, is also an example for your steel structures. Third one is the Golden Gate Bridge of California. Fifth one, Howrah Gate Bridge is located at Kolkata, which is constructed across the river Ganga. Harbour Gate Bridge of Australia is an also an example for your steel structures. So these are the some examples for your steel structures. Even Eiffel Tower is also an example for your steel structures. Even your, your examples such as cinema halls, auditoriums, factories, which are constructed by using a truss members and plates, steel plates. It's also an example for your steel structures. So what are the various types of methods that are used for analysis? So what are the various types of methods? So what are the different types of methods that are used for analysis? The first one is working stress method. Working stress method. Second one is ultimate load method. So what is the second method? Ultimate And the last method in method of analysis is limit state method. Limit state method. L S M is also known as limit state method. These are the three types of methods that we are using in analysis or design of your structures. In that first one is working stress method, working stress method. So what is working stress method? The working stress method is mostly based upon the first point is working stress method. It is mostly based upon the is mostly based upon the elastic theory elastic theory the first point is it is mostly based upon the elastic theory second one is the stress strain curve the stress and strain curve for steel and concrete is assumed as linear or a straight line. It is assumed as a straight line. The third point is the plane of section the plane of sections before bending remains plane means plane after bending this method is also known as modular ratio method this method is also called as is also called as modular
ratio method. So what is meant by modular ratio? It is nothing but m is equal to a small formula that is 280 by 3 times of permissible stress. It is nothing but 280 by 3 times of permissible stress. So what is generally its modular ratio? It is a ratio of modulus of velocity of steel by modulus of velocity of concrete. So m is equal to modular ratio is equal to velocity of steel by elasticity of concrete is, a, is a, it is also called as modular ratio. So what is permissible stress that we can write as sigma CBC is equal to ultimate stress by factor of safety, permissible stress is equal to ultimate stress by factor of safety. In working stress method, the factor of safety for concrete it is taken as FOS of concrete it is 3, FOS of steel it is taken as 1.78. So what are the basic assumptions that is the first one is, is mostly based upon theory of elastic theory, second one is the stress strain curve for steel and concrete is assumed to be linear or a straight line. Third one is the plane of sections before bending remains plane after bending. This method is also used, it is also known as modular ratio method. So what is modular ratio method? It is a modular ratio means nothing but it is a ratio of elasticity of steel by elasticity of concrete which it can be also written as 280 by 3 times of permissible stress. So what is permissible stress? It is a ratio of ultimate stress by factor of safety. So the factor of safety for steel it is 1.78, factor of safety for concrete is 3. So these all are the basic assumptions. Let us now see the drawbacks, drawbacks of working stress method. So what are the drawbacks? Let us see the drawbacks of working stress method. Now let us see the drawbacks. The main drawback is the stress strain curve for concrete it is assumed to be linear but practically or it is not possible, it is not true. The stress strain curve is assumed to be a straight line but it is not true. Second one, it gives mostly an uneconomical sections, it mostly gives an uneconomical sections. The third point is the effect of creep and shrinkage is ignored. The effect of the effect of creep and shrinkage is ignored. So, what is meant by creep? Creep is nothing but the long term deflection of a structure by the application of long term loading. So creep is nothing but the application of a long term loading on a structure for a longer duration for a longer span is called creep. So what is shrinkage? So what is shrinkage? Shrinkage is nothing but the change in the volume of a concrete, the volumetric change in a concrete due to evaporation of moisture content due to excessive temperature. So the effect of creep and shrinkage is ignored in working stress method is a main drawback in working stress method. The first one is the stress strain curve for 
the stress strain curve for concrete is assumed to be straight line but it's not true second one is it mostly gives very uneconomical sections and third one is the effect of creep and shrinkage is ignored so what is the second analysis that we are using that is ultimate load method the second method in analysis we use ultimate load method under the action of ultimate load method the structures are designed by multiplying the the ulti the load with some known load factors together to form a ultimate load method so what is meant by ultimate load method in this structure is designed by multiplying the working load with some known or unknown load factors so we made structure is designed based upon the <coughs> working load is multiplied with some load factors which gives your ultimate load method <coughs> this method is very uneconomical and it gives very uneconomical sections in so the first point this section gives very uneconomical sections it has excessive deformations and cracks it forms excessive deformation and cracks the failure criteria in this method is strain so the failure criteria here is strain so what is my ultimate load method in ultimate load method a structure is designed by multiplying the work with the working load with low, some no known or unknown load factors it gives very uneconomical sections it forms excessive deformation deformations and cracks the last one is the failure criteria here is strain is it clear so the next and last important design analysis at present that we are using narcissian steel is limit state method